Wow, is it a snake? Cool. That's a pencil. That's right. And here as well. Typically, yeah. Let's see how this plays out. It's Somehow they just brush it off. So, all right. We're going to hold these for a bit. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, that's a nice cat. How are your chef skills? Are With a normal prosthetic Shocking. annex, what were your chances of doing that? Uh, very, very limited. To be honest, the normal prosthetic, you can't, you've got to really kind of work the knife in. So that's why I think the serrated one's really good, because you can like... Yeah. So we build prosthetics that instead of being rigid and being made using bespoke processes, we make them sort of more like clothes and shoes. So they're comfy, they're really easy to fit. You can send them through the post of people. And by virtue of all that simplicity, they're like really affordable. This one's actually giving me PTSD because this, when we tested this, this was the day before my final thesis hand in. Yeah, was it? And I hadn't started writing my report. Just oh, this guy, I'm, I'm a tag along. Have, um, you, have you been to cricket over the road? And obviously it's completely different to try to here. Yeah, yeah. And it was just like nectar, it was amazing. And like, that's the only place I've ever had it where it actually tastes like. And it, it, I went from absolutely fine, November, a few customers came in, coughs and colds, perfectly normal. Uh, and I went from man flu to triple amputee in about 10 or 12 days. The pressure. Oh, cheers, well, yes. <laughs> I'm going to keep going. But if you're looking at Africa, China, India, then there's very, very little available. And also it's cost. You know, in the UK, my prosthesis probably costs about 35, 40,000 for two arms, uh, which have a shelf life of maybe three to five years. So it's a constant outlay of money. Um, so the, the mint device, which is lightweight, affordable, uh, all the different attachments you can purchase. So you're not having to buy something that does everything as mm -hmm. such. And then I can just hover above it and then it goes. Brilliant. Off you go then. So what we usually do is these are few these are ups. I was warned about the rubbish in We do the PL4 Dremel Digital. Do you? Do they these Laser cutters as well. Mm -hmm. Can I have one? <laughs> Probably not for free. How? Oh, no. Oh, yeah. You've got to sign it. Because children are growing at such a high rate, every two to three months they'd have to get refitted. So with our device, because it's a flexible socket and you can loosen the boa fasteners as well, you can wear it for a longer period and. Obviously, with a high-tech device that has sensitive electrics, uh, electronics, you can't take that through the, the dirt, the sandbox, the mud. So something that is yeah, life-proof and simple to use, simple to wear. something can be 
duplicated anywhere. And what we've learned over the last three years is that 90% of people with limb loss are in low-income regions. So as big of the issue is here with people not getting something that can help their day-to-day -day lives, there's people out there, a lot of people with nothing at all. Yeah. And that's what really excites us, that this is something that can be scalable to them and hopefully help them out one day. They all have charitable things yeah, to touch yeah, their country. They are the ones that are going to sell them because otherwise you're... We've got a EVA phone reinforcement. That's, that, this is either a micro or sometimes with this phone in it. Um, I just think that the concept is brilliant. I think the product is brilliant. And for an arm amputee, as I say in the UK, there's not many of us. But the global impact on this for children and, and amputees globally is it's huge. It will be huge. Cheers. Cheers, boys. Cheers. Chin, chin. Cheers. <laughs> Like, let's see, if you're going to surf in six months, if the road is in June, 